Grimes was there today. Saw him. He was getting some shots up. Okay. He's, he's touched down in Dallas. He's all right, now, he's already come out and said he's going to Bucky's, but again, he's a Texas guy. Yeah. He's from just outside. Of, he's from the Woodlands, so, you know, he gets it. He's he, back home. He's back home. He's back home. Look, I, I, look we already know what you're going to get with Clay. I mean, we do what we don't. Uh, Najee Marshall, I think, is going to be another Derek Jones Jr. Yep. Uh, I really do. Quentin is the wild card to me. Quentin Grimes? Quentin Grimes is absolutely. And, and, and look, I said this before. Him coming to the Mavs reminds me of when he left KU and went to U of H. Mm. All right? Because he got, I mean, he, he basically got laughed out of KU. All right? I mean, you know, social media, basically, the KU fans were just brutal to him. And then he went to U of H and turned himself into a dadgum good basketball player. I think you're going to see that here in Dallas. I think Quentin Grimes is the wild card in all of this tomorrow. I think, I think, I don't, I wouldn't even really focus too much on Quentin Grimes just because I believe what he did with Tom Thibodeau and the Knicks, you're going you're to see more of that rather than Detroit. I think you're going to see an upgrade of Josh Green. I think just to simplify for the people at home, think about what Josh Green did and just think about that yeah. with a more confident and better three point shooter. I think he's going to give you the defensive intensity. He's going to be screen dodging. He's going to be diving after loose balls. He's going to be your energy guy. He's one of your kind of wing slash uh, guard combos. That's playing the two and the three. Maybe can play the one and bring the ball up. Like I I think he'll be a guy that fits right in. Like he's just one of those stick him into the eight and a half over and under points per game next year. Eight and a half under. Yeah, I think he's like a five and a half points per game. Maybe six. I'm going to go over. I don't think I don't think he needs. I'm worried about his defense. Not worried. That's what I want him to. Yeah. If he brings the defense, because I was listening to some media members talk about this earlier, like Kyrie and Luca, if they're not on the court or they are on the court, whatever it may be, like if that spot is void, you need a defender. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm trusting Dante Exum, who had a good regular season, then a terrible playoffs. Yeah, and like what one good game in the – Jaden Hardy, I'm the yeah. biggest Jaden Hardy supporter you're going to find, and I want him to play, but he's obviously not a point guard. He's a two guard. Right. And then you're not getting defense from him. So are you going to pair him with Kyrie and just have two guys that just want to go get buckets and don't play deep? <laughs> I love Kyrie, but he's not a defensive guy. He not, can lock no, in in the playoffs. But no, he's not. You're going to pair him with Luka, and you got Luka and Hardy being your defensive guards, point of attack guys. You're going to pair him with Exum and just have not a lot of offense and both backup guards. That's why you pay Jason Kidd the big bucks. To figure it out. So I, I I will say I'm comfortable with Jason Kidd and Nico. Like I'm not stressed. Like they're gonna figure it out. Look, I I'm I'm this is as much of a um you know, not not I'm not saying an indictment, but this is as much of a referendum on, on our boy Jason Kidd. Yeah. I mean, look, this is you know, and, and you made a great point yesterday. I mean, of course, obviously I'm sure a lot of Mavs fans know already. I mean, you know, look, you didn't get you didn't get booted out of Brooklyn, mm-hmm. right? You you and obviously things didn't go the way you wanted to in in, in, in uh, Milwaukee, but now you know you he he he's resuscitated that that you know that 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 reputation okay and now you know you've given him the pieces I mean I, I don't know that again barring some sort of major injury and that's every basketball that's professional sports is okay J kid it should be one of the contenders with the, with him as the you, coach you, and, this is it man we've yeah. give hey let's go we've we've given you the keys I, to I will say with bringing Clay and it definitely I don't want to say speeds up the window but it definitely lets that puts the league on notice that like. Hey, that wasn't just a little run. Like we're trying to win. Like we just went and got a guy who's thirty four. He obviously is not going to play for ten years. We're not doing some long term plan. You do have long term plans throughout the roster. Yeah, but getting Clay tells the whole league we're competing for. Oh, a no, championship. we're not. We weren't just. We weren't just happy getting there. Thank you. Yeah. We want to go win this thing Correct. next year. Correct. All right, and let's not forget too. You got to keep Luca happy, and that's yep. exactly what you're supposed yep. to do when you've yep. got a generational talent like him. I, 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 and at the point where the roster is, there's not really many points to upgrade. Honestly, like obviously you could have gotten a Paul George, but you don't have the money for that. You didn't like, have the money to do it. So like you have a ascending center, you got a really good role player in PJ Washington. You have one of the best two guards in Kyrie. You got a pretty good bench. Like you've done all the things you would want. You feel good about where you're at, and I again I'll say this to the cows come home. I'm of. Every th- of of all the factors going into next season, my two biggest things are probably a what kind of shape is Luke in, and b what kind of uh, improvement do we see out of Derek Lively from year one to year two? That's almost like getting a new player. Derek that, that, Lively. That's that. I mean, look, that could all the conversation we're having could almost. I'm not gonna say it's gonna be moot. Mm-hmm. But if this dude ascends to the kind of level that we keep if hearing, he's not your stretch five. <laughs> look, if this dude's all the look, if if all of a sudden Derek Lively is a double-double threat, mm-hmm. 
you, now you've got an embarrassment. It's I mean, pretty much that in the playoffs, other than maybe that one series, you right, know, the finals. And, but I'm saying as far as, like, if this is a dude that can jump, stretch, you know, step back and hit a, a, a mid-range jumper, I mean, yeah. you know what he can do inside. I mean, we already know about that. But as far as just, you know, and, and, and we keep hearing that he can hit threes, I mean, mm-hmm. now all of a sudden he's hitting one or two a game. Mm-hmm. He's Like I said, I know everybody keeps talking about Tyson Chandler. I'm on the I'd like to see him be Chris Bosh bandwagon. I, I, the thing That's is, me. with Derek Lively, does it feel like there's a ceiling? It doesn't feel like, oh, yeah, he can only be this this good. It's like, I mean, he, that was about as good of a rookie center you can have. I'll tell you what, he got, I mean, look, <laughs> how much more the guy got better as the year went on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, and that's what you said. a 20 year old. Exactly. And with everything he had going on, I mean, lost his mom during on. the season. I mean, no, that, that's a lot to ask out of a young man. And so for him to be that guy, and, you know, we heard stories about how, and you probably heard him more than I did, that, you know, he was a guy that guys look to in the locker room, yep. which is saying a lot. Yep. Now, Maybe a little bit too much, almost. I mean, it kind of you know scratches my head when I hear that. Okay, a rookie's the guy you're looking toward to, but at the same time, too, you got your boy Clay Thompson in, who again brings in that automatic respectability. Yeah, the two voices in that locker room was Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris. Those were the two guys that were leading the speeches. <sighs> Markeith was, <sighs> tell you what, he he was easily like the the two veteran leaderships when it came to pregame talks, yeah. halftime talks, on Good a losing shot. streak. Who's the person talking about the locker room? It was those two every time. It's what every single player, every single coach shared the same sentiment. And then Lively was more that on-court guy, like the vocalist. Like, hey, guys, get back. Let's do this. Let's X, Y, and the third. Uh, I was at KU when he uh, was one of the guys that fought the football team way once upon a time. So there you go. Shout out to Mark Keith and Marcus.